Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back, you're here for the day two wrap of three days of live coverage from theCUBE at Red Hat Summit 2016. Uh, you know, June 29th, 2016, Brian's uh, going to go down in history as uh, the first time a technology conference had a live wedding breakout. Yeah, well, I was, uh, they, they gave us a little hint last night that something interesting might happen and uh, Pretty amazing. I mean, it de you know, definitely tells uh, you know somebody is just you know, couple is super passionate about not only themselves but but about this uh, technology community. So first time for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we talk sometimes at these shows about uh, you know the passion that they have for product, whether they love uh, something there. I remember back in the day, you know, VMware used to have the I Heart VMware bumper stickers. Uh, you know, we we go to lots of shows like you know Splunk and ServiceNow where you know customers are you know really boisterous and getting excited. But but, but a wedding is you know, showing true commitment that they wanted one of the most important days of their lives to be here at the show. I know, it was, uh, I, again, I, I'm still a little bit shocked that it happened. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of things at technology shows. Uh, this took it to a whole nother level. <laughs> All right, so uh, from a technology standpoint, Brian, we got to talk to uh, a bunch of the innovation winners, we talked to uh, some of the big partners, uh, and uh, you know, some, some more of the executives. Uh, what's your takeaways from day two? You know, for me, a couple of big takeaways, you know, the, the first one was as we talked to some of the, the, the end customers, the innovation partners, we talked to the Bombay uh, Stock Exchange, we talked to uh, Amadeus, who runs the backbone of basically the travel industry, you know, huge mission critical applications, huge vertical industries, you know, running on open source, running on containers, running on platform technology, uh, you know, it, it really makes it very real, it makes it, uh, you know, mission critical, it shows how, you know, what, what, what Red Hat's doing, but we also heard from them saying like, look, this is not just about technology, this is about a partnership, it's about changing the way they work. I was really impressed with those two customers. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting, I want to get your, your thoughts on, uh, Paul Cormier came out here and said basically, you know, containers are Linux, it you know, sits in the user space, it's just, you know, all containers today are Linux, of course, Microsoft's working on their bit, sure. um, but Microsoft's also here embracing uh, uh, Linux. So uh, what's your take on Red Hat's <coughs> position in the container marketplace? I, Paul made a very bold statement. He said, look, I, you know, we think we are in the lead. He thinks everybody else is chasing them because again, he said, this is a, it's a Linux game. You've got to be a Linux distribution company. You've got to manage Linux. You've got to deal with security. Uh, you know, overall this week, they've laid out a very, very compelling, not only container strategy, but also platform strategy. So we'll see how that plays out. But I think if you look at portfolio wise, Red Hat is, is in a very strong position. Yeah, uh, and it was great to see, as you, you talked about, Amadeus, a proof point company that's, you know, they're leveraging Docker, they're leveraging Kubernetes, uh, they're, they're using OpenShift there. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's good to see, uh, as we, we talked about with uh, Chris, War, uh, Chris Wright uh, and Dave Ward, uh, some of these things that we talked about, emerging technologies kind of stabilizing and uh, getting into actual real customer environments. Right, yeah, no, I think we saw, we saw that, and then on the flip side, we also saw, uh, you know, a lot of talk around you know, new things going on in the development space, you know, new versions of JBoss, uh, open source .NET Core, so we're seeing Windows and Linux kind of merging together. Those two communities, again, that seems almost as foreign as having a wedding here at a show, but you know, we're seeing pretty interesting things this week. We're seeing mature technologies, we're seeing innovation technologies. Uh, you know, it's what you'd expect from, from Red Hat Summit. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite lines of the day is uh, when we had one of, one of the security guys on from Red Hat, and he said, oh, well, you know, security, is, is it good, is it bad, is it ready? And he said, basically, we've got uh, Schrodinger's container. So <laughs> I think it speaks for itself. Uh, is it dead, is it alive? Uh, we're, we're, we're getting to the point, we'll figure that out. Yeah. No, it's been, it's been a really interesting, today was very interesting. I think you know, we got much more depth around the products. We got a very good sense of how committed uh, Red Hat is to some of these markets and, and really wants to drive that, that container cloud native space. Uh, and they really, they backed it up. They backed it up with uh, not only a very bold technology demonstration live on stage, but have been backing it up with customers all week. So you know, I think the walk away from day two, we're you know, two thirds of the way through the event is uh, you know, Red Hat it wants to be a serious player. Uh, they're still the, the only one making, uh, you know, making money as an open source, pure open source player. And, and the community, again, it's growing, continues to grow. We're seeing people 
you know, actively begin to change how they interact with communities, interact with open source. So it's, it's an interesting uh, transition. Yeah, so Brian, some of the other shows we go to, the one that comes to mind, AWS reInvent. The yep. tension between the developer community and enterprise. Uh, you know, Red Hat's had an interesting intersection of that space. Uh, what, what's your take about how that dynamic plays here? You know, I, I think, um, you know, to me, if, if you boil it down to its simplest things, you know, what AWS is delivering or any of the public cloud services delivering is a business that says, I really want to kind of get out of the IT business. I want to focus more on, on applications or on, you know, kind of that frictionless thing. Uh, whereas Red Hat has kind of a blended strategy uh, for the customer who wants to continue to own technology as a, as a core competency, uh, but also wants to have the flexibility to use the public cloud and use that agility. Uh, you know, they're giving people more of a blended story. So, you know, it's, it's Look, we're seeing very clearly, this is not a winner-take-all game. We're seeing open source plays a role, public cloud plays a role, and the applications, the different types of applications are driving different business models for different customers. Yeah, all right, so uh, we've got one more full day of coverage here. Uh, really pleased to have, uh, uh, we've got some more customers. We've got somebody from NASA JPL coming on. Uh, we've got Microsoft coming on. It's, oh my gosh, we're at a Red Hat show. Uh, Microsoft's coming on. Uh, we've got uh, the new acquisition three scale. We've got the CEO coming Talk on. Talk APIs. Uh, a couple more customers uh, and uh, lot, lots more to cover, and of course, uh, there's free beer uh, in the, the booth area, so that's where a lot of people are going. If you're at uh, home, feel free to crack open your own beer if you're watching on the live stream. All right, and uh, when the beer starts flowing, it's time for us to kill the stream, so uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with lots more coverage here from Red Hat Summit 2016. Thanks for watching theCUBE.